Um, sturgeon, cool fish, another really primitive looking fish. Um, they kind of resemble sharks because they have that large upper tail fin. Um, sturgeon are pretty famous because sturgeon produce caviar. Um, and, uh, and of course the Black Sea area produces some of the most expensive caviar. Um, but uh, you know, caviar, for, I never was in, but have been a big fan of caviar, but, but some people are. So sturgeon is the fish that produces the most expensive caviar. Um, sturgeon occur in big rivers again. They have to have broad sandy channels. And so again, Missouri, Kansas, Republican rivers, these are big rivers that can support sturgeon. Their current status is not really well known either because they've disappeared from areas where they used to be commonly caught. And rivers, are, of course, are changing. Every, every time you turn around, you know, we have the changes in our bigger rivers. And compound that right now with the droughts. And so their uh, situation is not all that well known. But people are still catching sturgeon. And, and uh, we still have them in the state. Paddlefish, cool fish. We used to raise them here at Milford. I wish we were doing it now. But uh, but we don't. This is, this is one of those. Uh, fish that, again, a primitive looking fish, they have that large, long snout on them that really don't, don't know what that function is. A lot of fisheries biologists believe that this is that fish that swims through the water with his mouth open. He's eating plankton. Um, he's eating tiny microscopic organisms. And so with the mouth open like that, the idea is that the paddle in the front helps counterbalance the fish so that he's not kind of tilting one way or the other with that long nose. It's got a lot of sensors on it too. Uh, it's got some little barbels that hang down from it if you get a really close look at it. Um, these grow to be big fish. One of our largest freshwater fish that can be over 100 pounds easily. Um, the large the rivers and lakes are home to them. They have to migrate in order to spawn. And so we've got paddlefish in Milford Lake. We've got paddlefish in a lot of big reservoirs. You'll never catch them because they don't take a hook. I mean, you can't throw a worm in the water and get a paddlefish to take it, so you have to snag them. They're one of the very few fish that are, you can snag. There's this actual snagging season, and the only time you snag for them is when they're making their spawning runs upstream. Um, so every once in a while when we do a dewatering here at Milford Lake and we clean out the kettle where the water comes out of the dam and you inspect the dam for cracks and things, we always find one or two paddlefish down in the kettle. Um, but uh, like I said, most people, you never catch them unless you're actually snagging for them or, or intentionally trying to catch them. Um, but cool fish, and another fish that is in peril because paddlefish have a poor man's caviar, so to speak. There's a black market on the eggs of paddlefish as a, as a substitute for sturgeon caviar. And so again, uh, typically when they're being uh, black marketed like that, people are to kill the fish to get the eggs very quickly and, uh, and just leave the fish, you know, the flesh of the fish to rot. Uh, so, the, and these fish take a long time to mature and so, it, you know, they can't recover from that kind of a black market on them very easily. One of the things we were doing here at Milford is we were raising them, it was about a five year program, um, we actually raised them here and then they were released down in Oklahoma. And people are like, well, why would you release them in Oklahoma? Well, because the people who would get a chance to fish for them are the Kansans, because they make their, their run up the Ark River in the Kansas. And so um, that way it was Kansans who had the opportunity to, to fish for them. But that program, we haven't done that now for, the funding was a, a limited term project. So they were cool to have here. And the, we had a tank set up for them in the nature center. Um, one thing about fish is they have a lousy reverse, okay? So when they, you put them in a tank and a fish like a paddlefish is going to get to the end and he just kind of sits there and bounces mm -hmm. off the side of the tank. <laughs> and maybe they figure out to go this way and then they bounce off that corner. And then, so um, paddlefish end up with these little upturned snouts, mm -hmm. like pig snouts. If you, you would. So we got a tank in the nature center. We bought a hex tank so that it would just swim around in circles and that worked really well. So, um, but, yeah, fish have a lousy reverse. That's why they don't back out of nets and stuff when they get caught. And that's why you can force them. They'll find a net and they'll follow the lead net into the trap and can't figure out how to get out. You know, there's no trap door or anything. They just can't um, think about reversing. 
drawers. I was talking about those earlier. Those are those ones with the very cylindrical body, bodies. Um, they have that air, air bladder that lets them live out of the water for a long time. Um, they are the only fish in Kansas that has toxic parts. Uh, and their eggs are actually poisonous. I don't know who figured this out. I wouldn't have eaten gar eggs, but somebody figured out that their eggs are poisonous. Um, and we have three different kinds of gar here in Kansas. But uh, <coughs> gold eyes, they're, uh, they're actually uh, a fish that occurs in large rivers, but they're not as common um, as they once were. And in fact, Milford here is home to the only, really the largest population, or the most stable population in the state, because um, it's really considered scarce most other places in its range. Um, good forage fish, another fish that uh, gets fed on by uh, bigger fish. Um, keeps those, and they have that eye shine too. They have a, those, some of those cells in their eyes that let them produce that weird eye shine by the call the gold eye. Eels, they are the one, there's only one species that occurs in North America, and it's called the American eel. And uh, as we said earlier, they never begin life here in Kansas. They are born more than 3,000 miles away in the Atlantic Ocean. Um, don't see very many eels also in the state now. Um, they need big rivers, Missouri, Mississippi rivers. But if you get too many dams and it's the, um, along these rivers, then the chances of seeing more of these eels is, is diminishing as it goes. We did actually catch one of those here at Milford Lake too. Um, many, many, about early 1990s. And uh, we put it in a tank in the nature center for a while, but it, it, it stayed hidden all day long. And at night, it had a heyday. And just, it would tear up every plant you put in the, in the aquarium. It'd all be floating in the morning. And it was all turbid and cloudy. And you couldn't find the thing. I tell you, there is nothing slipperier than an eel. That is a big mistake. You could not even hang on to those fish with both hands. They just, just squirt right out. That's slimy fish. Um, herrings, actually, the gizzard chad is, is the best known member of this, of this in, the, in the state of Kansas, but it's actually a type of herring. Uh, again, this is probably the most, most abundant Kansas fish. Um, good, good basis for that statement, but they are important food, again, for game fish. So in reservoirs, in almost all, every reservoir in the state, there's a, a good population of gizzard chad. Um, but they can also become too abundant, and you can get size classes that can't be eaten by anything. They grow fairly large, and, and uh, you get them to a certain size, and there's not too many things that will eat on them. Um, so that can be a, a management problem for some reservoirs. Minnows, here we go. This is a big, everybody, a lot of people call anything that's a little a minnow, but there is actually a class of fish called the Cyprididae, and these are minnows. And minnows, um, throat teeth that we passed around, um, some other char characteristics like they don't really have scales on their head, um, they have either short triangular or squared dorsal and angle fins, or they don't have any spines in them. So those are just some technical things that make you a minnow, but um, there are lots of fish in this group. Chubs, goldfish, shiners, stone rollers, grass carp, these are all different types of minnows. And they are the main food for most predatory fish in streams. Um, so um, just keep in mind that yeah, trying to identify minnows is, is a very hard task. And, and there are a lot of minnows that look like each other. Um, suckers, pretty easy to recognize. They do have that sucker mouth on the bottom. Um, they really are like little vacuum cleaners of the fish world. They just go along sucking up rocks and, and uh, getting the stuff off the rocks and material between the rocks. And, but they can grow up to be pretty big fish. Um, big mouth buffalo, which can be over 80 pounds, is, is a type of sucker. But we have quite a few suckers in Kansas. Catfish, we have 12 different kinds of catfish, but most people have never even heard of six of these. They're, they're, kind of, they're called the mad tong, um, and uh, they don't get much more than four or five, six inches, and they live in streams, and um, they are just cool little fish that uh, you don't get to see very often. I already talked about how they, they have their whiskers or their marbles are covered in taste buds. And you also 
probably already know this, but just in case you don't, they have the spines. They have a spine on the dorsal fin and a, and a uh, spine on the pectoral fins that it has a poison on it. And if you handle them wrong and they jab that into the skin, it's going to feel like a bee sting. Um, some people, you know, react worse with than others, just like any bee sting or any kind of a, a toxin in the environment. Some people react differently than others, but I, I'm not aware of anybody who's ever had it life-threatening reaction to uh, this, but uh, they will make you think twice about grabbing a channel catfish without, without grabbing it. There's a way to grab it. You want to make sure the dorsal spine is down and you grab them this way and you can usually hang on to them um, like that. Catfish have that, that spine. Then there's these groups. We don't have lots of representatives of pike were introduced to Kansas. They were never here. They're a northern fish. Um, one of the things though that gets confusing about pike is that walleye are often called walleye pike. Um, and they're not a pike at all. A walleye are, we're going to talk about that, they're a perch. But, um, so sometimes you run into that trout. We don't have any self-sustaining populations of trout in Kansas. However, over the years at least six different kinds of trout have been introduced here. Now, the only time you really have trout in the state is during winter fishing, fishing a lot of city lakes and, and uh, get involved in bringing in a load of trout. You have to buy a special uh, tag or a stamp to, to catch the trout, but it's a great wintertime activity. It gives Kansans the opportunity to catch trout without having to go to Colorado or Missouri or someplace else. Um, but those fish, if they're not all caught, by February or March, they're not going to survive. They won't be, they will die in uh, July or August when the water temperatures get 80 and 90 degrees. Um, so trout need to have very high oxygen content in the water. And the colder the water, the more oxygen it holds. So, so um, warm water just doesn't hold enough oxygen for these. There are a few places, if you're familiar with Rock Springs Ranch, just south of us, and, uh, they have a deep, pool there that's spring fed and it stays cold enough and in fact they have some really nice big trout in there that you can kind of go see. Um, they're fun to, when I'm down there with kids we go sing up crawdads and we go to the trout pool and we throw the crawdads in and it's quite fun. Uh, so um, fun, fun, fun. Codfishes, we have one, it's called the burbot, probably not likely to see it. It's only in the northeast corner of the state and even there again it's one of those fish that questionable whether it's really not you know, doing all that well in Kansas. Top minnows are a group. Uh, they're really small fish. They resemble the minnows, but they have that mouth that's terminal up to the top. Um, so they feed just below the surface. Mosquito fish, that's an introduced fish. It's our only guppy that we have in the state. Um, not native, introduced, but just as the name implies, it eats mosquito larvae. And that is originally why they were brought into the state, is to feed on mosquito larvae. They do not uh, lay eggs, they, they give birth to live young, just like any pet store guppy. So, so that is actually a type of guppy that has been introduced in the state. Very common, easy to see. Um, silver sides, they're actually a, mostly a marine family, but we do have what's called the brook silver side. It's another, it's a long skinny silvery fish that you sing up with a lot of minnows if you're in a stream. Sculpins, very, very cool fish. But only going to find it in the Ozarks. You're only going to find it in the southeast corner of the state. We only have one kind. It's called the banded sculpin. And they're tiny like that. Um, really cool fish. And then finally, we got a couple of groups left. This, the temperate basses or the sea basses. That's what we're going to talk a little bit about those over the hatchery tour. Because those are the striped bass, the white bass, and the hybrid, which is called a wiper. A wiper is a hatchery or man-made produced fish. You really don't get together in nature. Uh, White bass and, and striped bass. Uh, white bass occurred here all along. Striped bass, uh, not so, not here. They've been introduced, but um, striped bass are more. You know, you can go fishing for striped bass off the coast of South Carolina or in the ocean. They're a popular popular fish.